The two pictures you've just seen were part of the Benetton and Hate campaign. Benetton decided to doctor, which means change, pictures to call for tolerance and, yes, also to promote the brand. Here, Pope Benedict is kissing Sheikh Ahmed Mohammed El Taib, a renowned Imam in Cairo, Egypt. Even though the Vatican was planning on suing Benetton for this picture, I decided to use it because, for once, pictures, images are used for the good of humanity, to help people be more tolerant. Since we've been focusing on the rather negative aspects of images, I wanted something a bit brighter to start these flipped activities. I would like you to take a minute to watch the explanation of this campaign. No, we haven't just got a behind-the-scenes look at what goes on at G20 summits. This is in fact the United Colours of Benetton's latest, somewhat controversial ad campaign. It features world leaders like Barack Obama and Hu Jintao locking lips. One of the most controversial images features the Pope kissing one of Islam's leading figures, Ahmed Mohammed El Taeb. There are also images featuring Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the President of the Palestinian National Authority, Mahmoud Abbas. Kim Jong-il makes an appearance too. He's locking lips with his South Korean counterpart, Lee Myung-bak. Benetton's counting on its unhate campaign to generate buzz for the brand. The Vatican's protesting about the Pope picture already, though. It's reportedly considering suing the firm. My next topic is a bit darker, since we are going to talk about the religious framing of pictures. So, considering how religious standards can change the images we see, I was actually extremely pleased with the Benetton and Hate campaign. Let me show you what I mean by religious standard changing images we see. For instance, Iranian television has to follow very strict religious standards regarding the appearance of women. For instance, in 2013, Michelle Obama's dress was changed from a rather low-cut and sleeveless dress to a neckline short sleeve one. Let me show you. This is the original picture. This is what viewers in Iran could see. No more low-cut neckline and also the short sleeves on the dress. It had happened before and it happened in 2011 with the European Union foreign policy chief, Catherine Hashton. As you may guess, this is a newspaper in Iran, and if you notice here, her neckline is rather high. The high neckline is clearly a retouch, because if you look at the picture published in Europe, you can see that Catherine Ashton's neckline is low by some standards, and we can actually also see her necklace. Iranian television has to do what the religious leaders tell them to do, because if they don't, they get in trouble. Let me show you the example of Shakira cheering at a soccer game in 2013. If you remember correctly, in this picture you can easily compare the way Shakira is dressed with the way Michelle Obama was dressed and yet, uh, the Iranian state TV did not cover her up. They were actually attacked and told they were not religious, that they were un-Islamic. From a distance, what is happening in Iran with all these doctored pictures is almost, yes, I would even use the word funny. But let's keep in mind that Iranian women 
have to live with these standards every day of their lives. And to me, that is a clear example of discrimination against women, since men don't have to follow the same rules. Discrimination is definitely the angle of our next topic that I called racial framing of pictures. Discrimination was and sadly is still visible in the way pictures are captioned. A caption is the title given to a picture. The example I am going to use is connected to Hurricane Katrina. As before with the Unhate Benetton campaign, I will be silent for the next two slides. Please try to answer the questions you see on the side of the pictures. I will not try to guess what your answers were. I will just tell you what the media said. So the first picture to come up was the picture of the white couple on September 4th, 2005. The white couple was described as having found bread and soda from a local grocery store finding. While on September 5th, 2005, so a day after, the African-American child was described as having looted, which means stolen, so having stolen a grocery store. Again, here you see the word looting. We have here a clear case of racial framing. And that, to me, is a very sad reality. So the question seems to be, how do we find truth? Well, that is definitely a good question. And I think that between this activity and what we have studied in class, it is definitely not easy to find it. Especially if you're caught on the spur of the moment, meaning that all your emotions, all your energy are not quite under control. So trying to keep cool when you're watching the news and be critical when something seems biased, for instance, the racial framing pictures, or a little too perfect, the way pictures were doctored, are still doctored in Iran. As a way to remember, think of the movie What the Dog. If something seems too perfect, remember what they showed in the movie. Again, this is a, not a true story, but still, it clearly shows that technology is so advanced that it can make us see what is not really there. I will finish the video by reminding you that now is your time to reflect, a time for reflection, meaning a time to think. And to do this, I would like you to find at least one other image that either promotes tolerance, like the unhate campaign, frames according to religious standards, like what we saw for Iran, or, so not the three of them, choose one, frame a uh, picture that frames according to racial prejudice. Please be aware that I want to have information connected to this image or these images if you decide to do more than one. The where and the when are always important. So where and when was the image published? What was the caption or title? And as best as you can, we need a clear explanation of the context of the picture. And yes, some of you will present in front of the class, so please be prepared to explain why you chose this picture. Thank you very much.